following is a presentation of the Pro Wrestling Report. Informative, entertaining, and real since 1998. Welcome back to the Pro Wrestling Report here on 540 ESPN, ESPNMilwaukee.com. Damian Nelson along with David Hero and the lovely Linda Kay. We're live on Monday night, November 28, 2011. And uh, you hear it in the background, good old Tootie, Tootie Fruity. Our guest at this time joining us here on the program, Mean Gene Okerlund. Gene, welcome to the Pro Wrestling Report here on 540 ESPN. Well, it's, it's, it's a pleasure to be aboard. I wish I could be there in the uh, studio with the young lady. I mean, oh. with with you all. <laughs> Gene Okerlund, legendary. Thank you very much for taking the time to join us here on the program tonight. We know you're going to be here in Milwaukee this Saturday night for the big Blizzard Brawl show, which is going to be huge. We'll talk more about that later. I, but... I should point out that's going to be number seven. Absolutely. Yeah, the seventh How about that? Seven. Mm-hmm. But your first time at Blizzard Brawl. It, it is. It is going to be my uh, very first time, and I'm looking forward to it. But you know, Gene, it's not going to be your first time here in Milwaukee for professional wrestling. If you go back to the days of AWA, the American Wrestling Alliance, which of course had many a great show here in the Milwaukee area, when you think about Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and your AWA days, what pops into your head? What are your, some of your great memories about those times in your life? Well, of, of course, uh, many of the nights and days that I spent in Milwaukee, I probably don't remember anything. <laughs> but, uh, but I will, I will say this: uh, Milwaukee has always been uh, a real a mecca, a hub for uh, for AWA, and I, I'm going to correct you on that. American Wrestling Association. Association. Oh, yes. I was, I was just right. making sure you were paying attention there. Well, I am paying attention. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the WWE and uh, WCW also made strides there, as, as well as a ton of independent shows that have done so well in Milwaukee. It's a, it's, it's a great wrestling capital, if you will. And you you can't think of Milwaukee and wrestling without thinking of names such as the Crusher, who of course is legendary around every corner and down every block and up every alley here in the Milwaukee area. And Milwaukee definitely famous for wrestling. And Gene, your time certainly did not stop in the AWA as you then moved on to World Wrestling Entertainment, then over to WCW, and now back with World Wrestling Entertainment. It it just I, I can only imagine. The things that you've seen, the shenanigans in professional wrestling hey, over hey, the hey, years, hey. and I heard about no. some of them on the hotline. No, yeah, but uh, no shenanigans. <laughs> uh, however, I want to tell you this about R- Reginald Lasowski, uh, the one and only Crusher. Yes, uh, of course, uh, his daughter, the homecoming queen, at Pulaski High, if I recall. Yes, my alma mater. Yes, I'm not. I'm not going to call call you on how many years ago that might have been. But uh, this guy was a classic in every sense of the word. He and I used to play uh, gin rummy, and i got to be very candid and honest. I didn't walk away from the table with a lot of my money left. <laughs> he, he would clean house. And definitely one of the greats. I mean, just, you know, the Crusher and Baron and Mad Dog. And, you know, Gene, you've always found a way to always be at the center of all of it, whether it be with the Crusher and Mad Dog or Hulk Hogan and Andre, even in WCW with Paula Poundshock, I believe her name was. It was always but that's, that's close enough. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but, was, I mean, when yeah. people talk about wrestling, Mean Gene Okerlund, and just you know, you being there with the microphone and doing the pre tapes and the promos, legendary, and you know, being in the in, in the Hall of Fame. What an amazing career you've had. Well, uh, you know, I thank you for all of the uh, compliments, but uh, i got to be honest with you. I enjoyed uh, my travels, and it's been now 41 years, uh, probably through the wrestling world as much as anybody. And a couple of great stories that I just want to share with you, David, and the lovely young lady. Who, by the way, Linda Kay will be walking you to the ring Saturday night. You've got to be kidding me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Not at all. Mm-hmm. 
Linda, is all, that all the farther we're going? <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought I'd throw that in. I probably should have thrown it out. <laughs> no, no, no. Anyway. That's all good. And you said there's no shenanigans. See what, see what, see no, what happens there? None. Mm-hmm. None, none whatsoever. <laughs> but uh, I wanted to uh, just share this story, and I told David this before. Uh, down in Chicago, and I think it might have been 19... 19- 76, 77, 78, but uh, the latter part of my run with the AWA, it was going to be the Crusher and the Bruiser going up against a new coming team known as the Road Warriors. Yes. And, of course, that was uh, Mike Hegstrand and, yeah, and Joe Laronitis. But anyway, Bruiser said, as only he could say it, hey, I don't want you guys throwing me up in the air like that. I'm an old guy. I can't take that crap anymore. And, of course, first thing they did when they got in the ring with Crusher and Bruiser, you know that press that the Road Warriors did? The Gorilla the Press Slam. Press? Yes. Yeah. They, uh, that first thing they did on Bruiser, and he went nuts. <laughs> uh, but uh, I, I think a little bit of that is probably going to be relived this weekend in Milwaukee. Uh, with this uh, tremendous event we got uh, upcoming. I see a lot of names on that card that are familiar to me. It's going to be a fun night, absolutely, at the Waukesha County Expo Center. And, Gene, you talk about your 41 years in the business. Obviously, you, your most memorable times would have been those surrounding WrestleMania, the biggest events of the year. And you were a part of the first WrestleMania, and I have attended the most recent WrestleManias as well. What would you have to say is the biggest difference from – the first WrestleMania in Madison Square Garden in 1985 to WrestleMania last year in Atlanta, Georgia. What What is the big notable difference as it pertains to the wrestling industry that you have noticed? Well, of course, uh, back in 1985 at Madison Square Garden and the very first WrestleMania, uh, it was something we didn't know what to expect. I rode over in a, uh, in a car with Jesse Ventura, and, you know, he was a little, he's a little hyper anyway, right? A little. So he was kind of, yeah, yeah, he's, he's wired. But, uh, and a politician, so, you know, what can I tell you? <laughs> uh, but uh, when we went over, we had no idea what WrestleMania was going to be. And then when you would see this thing kind of unfold in front of your very eyes, uh, and there were substitutions. The only reason I ever sang the national anthem, for God's sakes, at WrestleMania. Which I don't know if enough people know that you did that. I'm glad you made that point. Yeah, yeah. At the WrestleMania won. Uh, somebody was a no-show, and I won't mention who it is or why he was a no-show. But uh, nonetheless, we got her underway, and I'll tell you what, that thing, the, the, the grandeur and the uh, excitement of it all was just uh, something to behold. And I wish everybody could have been there. You can watch it on videotape, but it ain't the same thing, folks. Trust me. You know, you know Gene, we talk about WrestleMania 1, and the main event had legends and you know guys like Hulk Hogan and Cowboy Bob Orton, Jimmy Superfly Snuka, who will be at the show on Saturday night, um, Rowdy Roddy Piper. Guys that could do and it a all. real stiff by the name of Mr. T. Yes, exactly, and Mr. T. And it just, it's you know, to me, how wrestling has changed over the years. And, of course, everything does change. But you went from guys that worked the territories, and they worked in the AWA and the NWA and the Mid-Atlantic and the Pacific Northwest. And now here they are at Madison Square Garden headlining the biggest show Holy ever. Game. You know, right. and. Holy and and now today you see the kids of Dusty Rhodes and Ted DiBiase and Cowboy Bob Orton and and and, and Jimmy Snuka and their kids are now in the business. And Jim DeAnvil Nizar. Yes, I didn't, and, I didn't even realize he had kids. But, uh. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just amazing how it's changed from just the attitude that they carried back then to today. And you know, you've been around it, like you said, for forty-one years. What do you think has been the biggest difference 
in the pro wrestler from, let's just say, WrestleMania 1 to now the pro wrestler in 2011? Well, in my opinion, everything uh, caters to uh, television. You know, back in the old days, it was uh, uh, you'd, you'd, you'd promote with a bunch of jobber matches, a main event in Milwaukee at the Mecca, mm-hmm. or in Chicago at the old uh, whatever it was out there at the Livestock Yards, the International Amphitheater. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, around the country, those were the kind of venues you had. And the talent was absolutely, I think, in my estimation, as good as it is today. I take a look now at Raw. I take a look at SmackDown. And there, I mean, there's got to be close to 100 guys and gals, by the way, that are uh, working the routine. And I kind of have to think to myself, you know, does it mean to them what it meant to us back then? The matches today are so short, they're so, I hate to say this, choreographed. But, uh, you know, back in the old days with the the Nick Bockwinkles and the Lou Thezes and the Vern Gagnes of the world, Mm -hmm. oh, my God, the Crippa was the best. And even uh, my good friend, uh, Pat Patterson, you take a look at all of those guys, and it was a whole different ballgame because, they could sell a wrist lock. Uh, nobody who was any better than Hardy Race, yeah. Dirty Dick Murdoch, Dusty Rose. I mean, I can go down that list of yeah. uh, of talent, but they they really made the product what it is today. It kind of looks like you're looking at a gymnastics meet mm-hmm. because it's it, it's all tailored for television, right. guys. It's no longer and, a fight, uh, right? Would you say? Whereas before it, it, it was a fight where, no where somebody wanted to win. It's a, it's a, as they say in the, uh, in the business today, it's an exhibition. It is entertainment, but it's very good entertainment, mm-hmm. and I'll give you that. It's different, and there's not always a problem with different, nor is different always better. But one thing that was always better was some of the great voices in professional wrestling, and you think of those names, obviously you being on top of the list, but you also got to think about a person you worked very closely with, Bobby the Brain Heenan who is just uh, the, the the things that we've heard and seen from the likes of a Mean Gene Okerlund and a Bobby the Brain Heenan, just absolutely amazing. And this Saturday night, Mean Gene Okerlund, you're going to join uh, an elite group along with Bobby the Brain Heenan as we will be uh, honoring you with the Lifetime Achievement Award at Blizzard Brawl 7 right at the Waukesha County Expo Center in the middle of that ring and, and just honoring your career as long and as great it has been, and so many memories, especially from everybody here in the Milwaukee area, of good old mean Gene Oakland. And I uh, can't wait to see you here Saturday night in Milwaukee for Blizzard Brawl 7. Well, uh, listen, I'm, I'm looking forward to it, and uh, uh, David has done uh, a, a great job. I'm, I'm going to be candid and in bringing in some top-notch talent, and it's going to be a great day for me to... Uh, uh, revisit uh, a lot of great times with Bobby the Brain Heenan. One of the best, if yeah. not the best. Mean Gene Okerlund, thank you so much for joining us here on the Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN. We will see you Saturday night at the Waukesha County Expo Center as part of Blizzard Brawl 7. Ladies and gentlemen, Mean Gene Okerlund here on the Pro whoa, Wrestling whoa, Report. Whoa, 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 one question. <laughs> yes, sir. Where where do I send the invoice? Uh, David Hero. <laughs> Of course. Yes. yes. We just took, a, the best. We just took away his corporate credit back. card. So. Yeah. Uh, thank, thank you, Gene. Gene. And this is the award-winning Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN, ESPNMilwaukee.com.